Welcome to the Empower 21 Leadership Podcast. My name is Caleb Worley. I'm the Executive Director for Empower 21. And today I'm joined with Nick Hall, the founder of the Pulse Movement, where thousands of young people are gathering in stadiums across America, really, and seeing God move in amazing ways. And so, Nick, we're so happy to have you with us here on the podcast today. Hey, man. Super uh, excited, honored to be here. Thanks for joining us. You know, uh, we like to take people back a little bit in the journey because at this point, we see the results. We see all that God is doing through you and, and in your ministry. But many people listening, they have a desire to do something great, but they don't know that everyone had to start somewhere. Yeah. Take us back in your journey. How did you get started in uh, ministry and where God has you? Yeah, it's crazy. And uh, I really feel uh, like a lot of us, I think just super humbled and fortunate. Uh, I think a lot of times you even see photos or video footage and it feels like it's not real. You know, I'm from North Dakota, uh, which is for those that don't know, it's a very rural state in America. A lot of people don't even know it's a part of America. Americans ask if we have igloos and, <laughs> yeah. you know, wagons and all that stuff. Sure, and, I wonder, uh, is there buildings? Yeah, yeah, is there electricity? I'll say, man, we got indoor plumbing last year. Very exciting time. Uh, but yeah, so that's kind of where I grew up. I grew up in a, a religious home, but I wouldn't say super like on fire for God. But when I was a little kid, my parents just had a radical change. Some neighbors uh, led them to the Lord. They started to get discipled, wow. started to see that as a little kid to the point that I'm asking my mom, what's this about? That's really how I came to faith as a little kid. And, uh, and honestly, I just started to tell everybody about Jesus from the first time I heard, because uh, it was good news for me, which made me feel like this is good news for everybody. Yeah. So that's a little bit of my background. That's amazing. Now, for those that might be listening, they, they've heard about the Pulse, they've seen some of the pictures or gatherings. Yeah. Give us just a, sna a snapshot. What is the Pulse movement all about? And yeah. what are you guys doing now across yep. America? So I was trained, uh, think back, youth group. I was trained under youth pastors, pastors, men and women of God who poured into me. They were telling me I was an evangelist. I didn't know what that meant. That's not cool for a 14 year old. You're not like leading with that to get the ladies, you uh -huh. know? Sure. Uh, but I surrendered to God's call. And then I started to get to travel with people like Billy Graham and Luis Palau. And so I'm traveling all around the world with these uh, you know, giants of the mm -hmm. faith. Uh, a few years into that, I'm on a secular university campus. My friends you know, mostly don't know Jesus. I'm trying to be a light. I'm preaching everywhere I can, but I have this context of 22,000 college kids, and there's maybe 500 of us that are connected to anything Christian at all. Mm. I mean, these are like unreached people group statistics. Wow. And so I wrote this paper as a dream that was saying like, how do I translate what I'm experiencing through these global crusades to my generation where I am. And I titled the paper Pulse. Mm. And this paper was really a dream of seeing a student movement. It was prayer for revival and it was unity. It was training. It was large. It was small. And it was blanketing the campus with the gospel. And we were like, man, we want to make as much noise as possible in the name of Jesus, you know? Yeah. And uh, it was wild. It was awesome. We had 8,000 students come out. 1,200 kids came to Christ. Wow. And all of a sudden, students all over America started asking us to come and help them. And I'm finishing my business degree. I'm sleeping in my parents' basement. I'm, you know, normal college kid stuff. And all of a sudden, we're like, what the heck do we do? You know, kids in Florida want us to come. And we're in North Dakota, so we want to go to Florida, you know, much less Paris or anywhere else that's messaging. And me and a buddy of mine, uh, one of my best friends, we both quit our jobs together. Uh, we both started raising support. We launched a ministry back in 2006. Mm. And we just said, if God wants it to go, it'll go. And if he doesn't, then what do we got to lose, you know? And so it's been an incredible ride, you know, growing every year. We had 50,000 students come out across North Dakota. That's like 10% of our state. Wow. Uh, in fact, I was just with our governor, former governor and first lady. He's now our senator reminiscing because they called me. And I'm like, oh, guys, it's the governor, you know? And they're like, hey, we want to come and MC your event. Would you be open to us coming and hosting? And we were like, yes, that would be amazing. And, uh, you know, 1,500 kids came to Christ at this event. And anyway, it's just been this ride. So moved to Minneapolis in 2010, moved our headquarters there. And now we're about 40-some staff full time. Uh, we had about 800,000 students come out last year to events. Wow. And so it's just been a real move of God to see... God using ordinary people from very unlikely places 
and I have no family connection, rich uncle. There's not a prophet that was over me. Uh -huh. This is like, man, this is ordinary people that just, we love Jesus. We believe the Holy Spirit is alive in all of us. Yeah. And God's looking for people who believe and are willing to go after a lost generation. You know, that is such a powerful story because you think about someone getting a vision, God yeah. speaking to them, not seeing it in the natural and operating in faith, yeah. taking those steps. And really, I think that's what it's all about is, is just obeying what God says. Yeah. You know, success isn't as difficult if you just obey God. Yeah. And I think your ministry, your life is such a testimony of that. Doesn't mean everything's perfect. Doesn't oh, mean man. that you, you don't have to learn along the way. But I think as a leader, there's a lot of people that have admired you mm. uh, from a distance and those up close. And it's probably because uh, you know, you've learned some things along the way that you practice now on a regular basis. Yeah. Uh, on a leadership side, maybe speak to a moment. What are some of the key things as a leader that are kind of your core values that yeah. you follow up on and you flow in on a regular basis? Yeah, I mean, I think there's a couple things. One, I would say, like, never go it alone. Uh, I think as leaders, it's really easy to get in an echo chamber where you have a bunch of yes people around you. Uh, I really tried from the earliest time to surround myself with leaders who are better than me at the different aspects mm. and then to empower them in ways that I'm going to disagree with, but I'm going to let them lead. Uh, I've just seen a lot of leaders that have run over a ton of people and their organizations are always dipping and always dying because they're always losing talent. And I just think when I see the movements that literally change the world, it's because there are a lot of gifted people that could all be doing their own things, but they all laid down a piece of it to be a part of something greater. Yeah. And so I just think like that surrounding yourself with others and seeking out the best and then unleashing them to be the best and having humility enough to say, man, I need to let them lead if we're gonna go anywhere. I also really feel a sense of um, submission, like not just to the Lord, obviously, but having older leaders above you and older leaders above you in the faith that have the all access pass, Yeah, you know, that they knew you when you weren't and they know you actually who you are. They don't talk to you like you're a guy on a photo or somebody who people wanna be around. They just like cut through it and they're like, man, Caleb, Yep. You're being an idiot, you know? <laughs> you need a couple of those guys. Yeah, and you need, you need those people who will point their finger at you and like just tell you truth. And I just think in my life, man, I've been blessed to have men and women of God. Even right now, I have a couple mentors that just I talk to monthly or even some like every other week where it's just, man, they're just speaking truth. Like they're mm -hmm. like, Nick, I see you ebbing and flowing into this. Uh, and then the third thing I would just say is rest. Like, and this is something I wasn't taught well uh, I don't think that like the principle of Sabbath has been modeled very well for a lot of us. Yeah. And I, for one, have been a preacher of the gospel for years while not honoring one of God's most basic commandments. Mm. And I just think like having rhythms of rest where the phone is off, where I'm literally just with my family, with my loved ones, with the Lord, and having those sacred boundaries, a pace that like is sustainable. Cause I just see a lot of us like killing ourselves and you feel it. Like I've had chest pains, I've had tension. Mm, it's overwhelming. What am I doing? How's this gonna work? And we get into this flow of like, do more, try harder, do more, try harder, even be more spiritual. I gotta fast more, I gotta whatever. Like we spiritualize being a workaholic mm -hmm. when the truth is it's just another form of idolatry and man, when we rest, like we're saying, God, you've got this. And that's when the divine and the supernatural really takes over. And you remember, oh yeah, it's yeah. not about me. You know, that is such an important point. And there's probably some people listening to us today. Yeah. Just as you were sharing, I just sensed that, you know, there's people, leaders, maybe in ministry or, or those that have a desire for it. And maybe they've been going about it the way yeah. of their own. Yeah. their own way, their own yeah. flesh. Okay, I'm gonna make this happen. I'm gonna do that. I'm working for the Lord, but really yeah. we're, we're working with the Lord. Yeah. You know, whatever he's leading us in, yes. we're, we're flowing yes. in. Yes. He's not gonna overwork you. He's not gonna undervalue you, right? Yeah. So yeah. maybe, why don't you just speak to a moment? Why don't you pray for those that are mm -hmm. listening to yeah. us, that are going through a difficult season. Why don't you just speak some hope into them? Yeah. If, if whatever God is leading you in, let's just yeah. pray for them right yeah, now. Yeah, let's do it. God, uh, we just pray right now through the power of your Holy Spirit for those that are listening, those that are watching. 
God, you're a good father and you give good gifts to your kids. And Lord, sometimes we fight for it. We strive for it. We get in this religious cycle of thinking we have to do it and even comparing ourselves to everybody else. But God, the people listening right now, you have not called them to be a replica. God, you have called them to be an image bearer of you. They are your son. They are your daughter. They are unique and called. And God, I pray that you would break the yoke of comparison off of them right now. I pray that you would break the yoke of striving and anxiety. And God, I just pray for a release of your Holy Spirit's power, yes. God, to rest in who you are and who you say that they are. Because God, that's all that matters. We are enough because you say we are. God, we are yours. So God, I just pray that you would wash over and unleash, God, a new wave of ministry, of the prophetic, God, of signs and wonders. Yes. Lord, not because we did it, but because we let you do it through us. God, we just wanna be empty vessels, willing to be filled, Lord, that your name could be made much of, God, because it's your power that's made perfect in our weakness. And so we boast in you, Jesus. Use us, use every person listening, and release us, God, from the pressure that says we have to do it, it's on us, and that we might blow it, God. Remind us that we can't. The victory is already won. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. It's a privilege to have you. And for those of you that are listening or watching today, uh, you want more information on Empower 21, just go online, empower21.com, or on social media, at Empower 21. God bless you.